to this morning, PLTR reported their quarterly earnings. Actually, it was from the after hours uh, last night, right? So it looks like they had pretty good earnings. They're moving up right now. I was calling this trade out just before all from the morning session. We were both Fausto and myself, who was on our morning watch list, who was on our pre-market watch list. Uh, you know, it's a very well-known company at this point. But at that, just a moment ago, myself and Barbara were following this trade off of 2650. So let's basically go over this trade in full from head to toe, from from Z to A. That's how we like to do it here in Traders Talk. From Z to A, because you know, we like to reverse engineer all these trades here. It's not just kind of a telling you what happened and that's it. Like, oh, you could have bought this stock here, could have ran it up. That's easy to say in hindsight. But how could you actually prepare for a move like PLTR? Well, that's what we cover here each and every Tuesday. So, you know, just to mention, PLTR had an earnings beat. Uh, they see fiscal year 24 revenue better than the estimate. Revenue beat, earnings beat, customer count of 41% driven by strength in U.S. commercial, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, our girl, Kathy Wood, very happy, I'm very sure, right? But you know, just to mention, had a great reaction in the after hours. That's literally where I begin. Um, we short here at CTU, we will short stocks. But you know, truth be told, much like I'd say most of us, if not all of us, I think you know, we look innately more for a buying opportunity, innately from like you know, birth of trading and learning how to follow the stock market. You try and buy low, sell high, right? So when I saw the pop in the after hours, innately, I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. Let's look for a trade tomorrow morning. Let's look for a good buying opportunity at some point. If this had crappy earnings and it tanked, you know, if it looked great on the chart, yeah, I'd look for a short, but not as much as I would be interested in that bounce and that buying opportunity. So right away, the pop leads me to become interested in it. Um, what also allows me to become interested in it is the fact that this stock has a good spread, has good order book, tight spread. This is what we see each and every day. Right now, it's pulling back a little bit here. So I just want to see what happens coming up on the next candle or so is live here. We're talking. But basically, you know, that's the first thing that drew my attention to this trade. It's a stock we've done well before on in the past because it's tradable. And it had good earnings. And not only that, it was trending up in pre-market prior to 8 o'clock. It was trending up prior to the market opening up. So when a stock is trending up, right, I'm going to ask Kathleen this. I'm going to ask Leda this, you know, Brad, Michael, all of our students here in chat right now in our trading room, that is, you know, what happens when a stock is trending up proactively? What are we seeing more of? Selling pressure or are we seeing more buying pressure as a stock is trending up, right? What do we got, folks? Yeah, Chris says that's why we follow the money. Absolutely. And you know, hey, if this is trending up, you'd assume that people are buying it. So you want to follow that, right? Just kind of, you know, uh, adding on top of what Chris said there. So that was my reason for being more focused on this trade out the gate this morning. But the better question is, like, where are the levels? Where are the, the big levels in which this stock is trading with, from? You know, where are the iceberg orders? Where are they on level three and level four? Um, you know, for a non inexpensive stock. I don't want to say this is expensive by any means. It's not. Maybe to some people it can be. This is just more of like a mid level stock for me, price range wise. What common set of price levels would you feel most confident in in seeing these iceberg orders at? You know, these big round iceberg orders, the larger orders at on the bid and the ask. You know, what common set of price levels would you normally feel most comfortable uh, trading off of? You know, maybe for a less expensive stock, you'd uh, possibly say like 50 cent levels, like every 50 pennies. For something a little more expensive than a cheap stock, we'll say, you know, more mid-level within our price range here, you know, probably just whole numbers. I am more focused innately on whole numbers here to begin. And I'll show you because in pre-market, whoops, I don't want to give away my answers, so... So pre-market trading, this was, you could see some icebergs around here, but as you zoom out, you got 30. And then as you go deeper into the pre-market trading here, you got 29, 28. So more so than anything, you're focused on the whole number levels as far as where you have those icebergs. For a cheaper stock, 50 cent levels, like $5 stock, $3 stock, $1 stock. Um, even looking back on the after hours last night, let's see what happens here. You know, really zoom in, I guess. You know, 29, there's 41,000 shares, 42,000 shares there at 30 bucks, obviously big one up top. 
So that's where I'm more starting off on, on the whole number of levels. That's kind of what, what my focal point will be to begin with. So, you know, hey, that would be like 26 bucks. That would be 27 bucks coming up top here. Um, you know, the more it goes up, 28, et cetera, right? So when I'm plotting for this chart here this morning, that's the first thing that I'm looking at. Uh, you know, hey, it's like we always talk about in class in phase two and phase three, you know, looking for these iceberg orders. But the way I teach it myself is, you know, hey, let's say if you get lost in the woods, what's the old adage? You look up, you find, you find the North Star, you find your way home, right? You know, this is our North Star in trading iceberg orders. And especially, uh, you know, to begin the morning, of course, book map and level three, that'll be your source of confirmation. But you want to start with that. You want to focus on 27, 28, 29, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. So that's what we're doing here to begin. We're starting off on that. That's all we're doing. Um, and actually, you know what? Let me peel this back one more time because I got an idea. I'm going to show you something where I messed up this morning. Because listen, it's easy to look at this graph and be like, oh, if what if I bought right here and you know I, I held on the whole time? For anyone that has that mindset with trading, they're probably not making money. Sorry, hate to be honest. That's the, that's the reality of it. Like where I call myself Captain Hindsight, you know, a I'm self-deprecating with my humor. B, I, I'm joking. Like this whole point of traders talk is to go back in hindsight. But for Grant, for Brad, for Margaret, Laureen, um, by the way, big shout out to Laureen, one of the nicest human beings I've probably ever met in my entire life. Um, I'll just say that for right now, Laureen. So big shout out to you. But Danny and Joyce, probably all of us here are the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. Just to mention to say that, you know, these are traders that know because each and every week we cover the same material. We go from Z to A on all of these stocks and we go through the same patterns. That's the key. It's the same patterns that are playing out on different stocks on different days at different times. So the key is, can you be more aware of these patterns to happen beforehand? And the answer is, yes, you can be. And, and it's all starting from pre-market hours. So that's where ultimately, I'll tell you where I messed up this morning, because it would be easy to tell you I bought it right here. But no, I mean, hey, normally reversal time is at 1030. So for as much as PLTR dropped at first and broke below 27, well, I'd expect this to be resistance coming up. But it is to say, though, that for as much as this is dropping, 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 I'm not looking for a bounce right away. We got time in, in accordance to the cyber clock, you know, around 1015, around 1030 Eastern time, I'd feel more comfortable. Real time on the microphone with Fausto in the trading room, I was saying that. And I could have taken this from 26. I didn't though, because I was more privy to the cyber clock. So more often than not, in situations like this, even with good news, even was trending up earlier, more often than not, you tend to see the 10, 15, 10, 30 bounce. I've lost money on this exact setup before. So that's where I'll tell you, like, oh, it moved up without me to begin. All right, what's our next level? That that's my key. What's the next level for this stock to try and move over? And as of right now, it looks to be 27, but that's where we'll come back to book map here. And I'll show you basically what I was describing to Barbara just a moment ago on our call just before. So, yep, you got an iceberg here at 26. You got resistance at 28, you know, 27, you assume. Okay, let's try and hone in right here. Let's kind of have it from this, this view right here because this is from like 6 a.m., you know, the three, three and a half hours right before the market opened up. All right, looking at CVP, this shows you like what volume got filled at what prices. So it seems like right around here, right around this area, maybe there seems to be some like, you know, more volume, I guess, that was traded and filled just from the consolidation uh, compared to other price levels. Now, it's not by a lot, not by a big margin, though. This is not by a wide margin. It's not a big spike. So it doesn't help me out that much. Um, but I will say, you know, if there's an area that I would focus on for high volume, I guess we'll start with, you know, 2650. And uh, you know what? Let's actually go 2640 just for right now, right, Barbara? Because when you look at the CVP and the delta column here, it's like actually a lot of red. It's a lot of red right there. What do we nickname red? What's the what's the nickname that we give red in class and time in sales? We, we talk about this with tape reading. We talk about it here in Traders Talk every week, right? Each and every uh Soon to be Monday morning, we'll say. But you know, what's the nickname that we normally give red? 
selling, right? So there seems to be a lot of selling at 2640 and like really we'll say like the area of 2650. This area just seems like there's a lot of selling. All right, well, what happened when the market opened up? Well, we know, Captain Hindsight it dropped. Not only that, but very quickly it broke below support, right? So, you know, it was at that point I knew pretty quickly, like if it's not even going to hold support here within the first five minutes or, or right away after, then you got to wait. You got to wait. That's the first thing. But then otherwise, this support level, once it gets broken through uh, from Margaret and Grant and Laureen and uh, Charles and Joyce and all of us here, support initially becomes what after, right? What are we expecting this support to become after? Resistance. So it was, it was resistance to a great degree for about like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It was having a damn tough time trying to launch off of this area. All right. So later on, it started to pop, right? It popped right here. I was on my call with Barbara at this point. We're looking all around, by the way, me and Barbara were on an active trading session, um, you know, basically with her and with, you know, a number of students, I will say like Chris or you know, Joyce, you know, a number of students I, I feel confident to trade with live. You know, they know what to look for, and, and I feel confident in that. You know, we'll, we'll go together. There was a lot moving, folks. This freaking LUMN was going. I was making money on uh, SGMO. I think I still might be. Did I get stopped out on the second half of this? I get stopped out on this. Yeah, I got stopped out on the second half of this. I moved my stop up, so they took me out break even on the second half. That's all right. It happens. Point being, folks, there's a lot moving around right now. So on PLTR, we saw this pop over this resistance line, this area, this resistance area. Okay, well, here's the thought. And again, I'll probably field more questions on this exact conversation in class or coaching. If you have one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're a part of our coaching program, schedule with me for later on this week or next. We'll talk more about it there. For all of that red, we nicknamed that selling, right? Like all of us correctly said to me, Joyce, Grant, Danny, Barbara, Margaret, all of us here in chat, correct. All of the red before, well, that was selling. That's what we nickname it at first, at first. Well, when this begins to pop and all of a sudden it's moving off of this red, it's moving off of this selling, doesn't it make you ask why? You know, if there is so much selling pressure there, wouldn't this just continue to drop off of this level and keep going down? So when it pops up suddenly, it leads you to ask why. Well, it leads you to do two things. A, it leads you to ask why. And then B, it leads you to answer that question of why, right? Because you're not just going to ask and be puzzled. You got to say, well, wait a second. That red, we kind of nickname the red selling. That's the, the nickname that we give it. You know, my nickname is Josh. My nickname is Jay Lev, Ace of Trades. My full birth nickname, my full birth name is Joshua Max Levitan, right? Well, what's the legal name for the red? What's the full at birth given name for the red? It's not selling. That's the nickname. The at birth name that we give it is on the bid. That Those are orders that were broken through on the bid side, right? Once support got broken through, it was on the bid. Well, wait a second. If we're going to see this break over this area, then perhaps the buyers are going to gain control. Perhaps whoever was on the bid is going to keep this on the bid. For when this breaks over this resistance level here, this area of resistance, I want the same people to answer this one, if not more. Skip, Alan, Barbara, Joyce, Laureen, Leda, Grant. When a stock breaks above resistance and it moves off of it, resistance becomes what? Right there. Bingo. And that's exactly where we jumped in on this trade. Did two entries, 500 shares total, and 2650 is my price. But right now we're on the way up to the next resistance, right? You want to know how, tr how to trade a stock off of earnings? It's two things. Just like Fausto says each and every day, and he does it in his like, free webinars. Follow the money. That's the first thing. B, and this actually comes before following the money because you have to be there before the market opens. You got to prep your levels. You got to be available in the morning to say, hey, where are my icebergs? So I'm a cyber group them. member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world 
of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.